whether you're building three statement models, whether you're building a leverage buyout models, discounted cash flow models, creating comparable company analyses, you're almost always going to deal with something called the treasury stock method. And the treasury stock method basically says, well, you know, a company that's got options, that's that's issued options to its employees, are those options in the money? How dilutive are those options? So when I think about the share count for a company, well, should I include those options or not? Again, for those of you who are not focused on finance too much, you can probably ignore this exercise. This is very sort of inside baseball for a very specific type of finance application. But again, it's perfect for Lambda. This is something we use all the time in finance. It's something we're always doing when we're analyzing what the share count for a company is. And it takes a lot of work. People always make mistakes doing it too. So let's create a function that sorts it out. So again, for those that, for whom finance is not what they're focused on, you could probably ignore this one. Fast forward it for those that are curious. I'm just gonna walk through it. So here, I've got a very simple example to show you how treasury stock method works. And then we're gonna turn that into a Lambda. So you got, imagine you get a company with a share price of $29. And the employees, there are basically four tranches of, of options, right? There's about, you know, 18 million options in gross options, but only 12 of those are in the money. And that's because the corresponding strike price, employees really, uh, it doesn't make sense for employees to exercise these options unless what's called the strike price, the amount of money they have to give in order to get a share that's worth $29 is actually less than that $29 share, right? So if I exercise an option, I have to give the company back $15 and they give me something worth 29. Well, that doesn't make any sense if, you know, my strike price is $30. I'd never give someone $30 for something that's worth 29, All right? So really the only options we need to worry about and when we're calculating dilution are the ones that are in the money, right? These 12. So we have a simple if statement that sort of calculates, is it in the money or not? And lastly, because the company does get the benefit of the proceeds, all these strike prices that employees are giving the company in exchange for stock, so sure, they get a bunch of dilution, but uh, the company also gets a whole bunch of money from this strike price that they could at least use to buy back shares in the open market at $29, to at least mitigate the dilutive impact of what's happening here. And that's that process is actually called the treasury stock method of calculating dilution. And so we've calculated simply that the total proceeds that the company would get as a result of this assumed dilution is $250 million. Let's assume this is all, you know, in uh, these option counts are in millions. So the manual approach would be to do what we just did. Okay, you've got 12 million, 12 million stock options that are diluted, potentially dilutive. The company is going to get $250 million to offset all this dilution, which enables them to buy back roughly 8.6 million of these 12 million in diluted options, meaning the net dilution is simply 3.4 million shares, right? So these options really only mean the company dilutes its share count by 3.4, not 12, or certainly not like 18. All right, so we can also be more sophisticated about it, and we're gonna have to be in order to use a Lambda. And we're gonna use some ifs and some products to be a little better at this. So again, part of the Excel crash course is going through this and learning how to do this. So gross dilution here, you have some ifs that basically tell you, hey, you know, rather than doing adding this column for calculations, let's just identify an array, right? The array here is the strike price. Okay, so if the strike price is less than the share price, well then sum these options, right? So that gets you straight to that 12 without having to go through this whole process, right? So really all you needed are these two arrays plus the price. Then I can use a sum product, again, using only those two arrays and saying, okay, well, you know, given if, if the strike price is less than the share price, well then just calculate the proceeds, right? So instead of doing all of this work to get to the 250, I can do it in one simple step. So I got my 12 and I got my 250, and that's enough for me to actually calculate the net dilution, same values, no matter what I do here, if I change these, they all kind of change identically, right? So this is the more sophisticated approach. This is how we teach our classes, right? Well, here comes Lambda. Now I, don't, now I just do this once and I never have to think about it again because I'll just create a TSM function. So setting this up for Lambda, setting up all this work, I need to combine the sum if and the sum product into one sort of area. And I basically do that by saying, okay, here's my, this is that 12, right? This gets me all of the uh, dilution, right? This is, I wanna sum all of those, those 12 million in options, right? And then I wanna subtract from that all the options that could be bought back. Well, how many options could be bought back? 
it's the $250 divided by the share price. All right, so that gets you that 8.6. That's how many shares you can repurchase, right? 250 divided by that 29. And in one fell swoop, I've got a formula that does it all. This is a complicated formula. In our classes, I don't recommend one giant formula like this because it's not transparent. But the benefit here is you can just drop this entire formula into a Lambda and never have to think about it again. All right, so Lambda doing this, I simply, I have only three parameters that I, I need to ask uh, the model user for. Well, what are the number of options, right? And you can insert this as an array. What's the strike? So notice, by the way, this is the first time we're using arrays. These parameters do not just have to be, you know, are not just limited to cell references. They can be entire arrays. So what's the number of options? What's the strike price? This this case, it is going to be just a cell reference. What's the current price? Or sorry, what's the strike price? That's the next array. And the current price is just that cell reference. And then I just plug in that long formula, except I replace all of the cell references with the names of those three parameters. Of course, I check everything at the end by putting in the um, the two arrays, right? The C75 through C78, that's these four tranches. E75 through E78, that's the strike price, right? And lastly, that's the uh, current share price. It works. So now I simply drop in the lambda I'm going to call this TSM. This formula calculates share dilution, net share dilution from options using the treasury stock method. I can define the parameters here as, let's scroll over here. This formula is getting a little long. Num options equal number of stock options. Next is strike price equals strike price. Again, I'm using very descriptive names, which I think is important here. Lastly, current price equals current share price. And now I just invoke TSM. I give the the array, the first array, the number of options, the strike price, and the current share price, and I don't have to do any more thinking, and I get that 3.4. Doesn't matter how long the array is, I can now invoke it, and it'll still work. So this is really powerful, really awesome stuff that you can use again if you're if you're doing something over and over again. Um, that's going to be great. So, so this will calculate that net dilution.